Hello everyone, Mark here, Mark's Max Muscle, and the topic of choice for today is the WBF and why it was the absolute worst bodybuilding federation of all time. First, a little bit of background. The WBF opened up its doors on January 30th, 1991. It was started by wrestling tycoon, wrestling promoter Vince McMahon. He decided to dip his pen ink into the bodybuilding world. I mean, how different could it be? His roster already featured performers that look like they could have been top five at the Mr. Olympia event. And I am telling you, top five, these guys had incredible physiques. But, of course, these guys were not going to be the bodybuilders in Vince McMahon's bodybuilding federation. He actually had quite a setup and quite a lineup of reputable bodybuilders, such as Aaron Baker, Mike Christian, Barry DeMay, Tony Pearson. Danny Padilla was there, who was a... Legitimate superstar in bodybuilding, but he was way out of shape, and he was he was old, let's face it. But they did have their cash cow, their golden boy, the blue chipper, if you will, Gary Stridham. And he was actually quite good indeed. So, with all those ingredients for success, why was the WBF a total flop? And, in my opinion, the worst bodybuilding federation of all time. Well, I'll just uh, show you guys just exactly the kind of product that they were producing. First of all, they had Mean Gene Okerlin, a prolific wrestling announcer. He was hosting it. So right out of the shoot, they did it like pro wrestling. And then the vignettes began on the big screen. They had Eddie Robinson loading up for bear seemingly with a knife. Then he started shooting at the audience. They were showing this on the big screen. So he had a bodybuilder, you know, blasting this M16 machine gun, showing us what he can do. And then, that wasn't enough. He walked out, live audience, with the gun, snooping around, looking for people, I guess. And then he started blasting into the audience. He shot into the audience. Even killed a guy. Look at that. Up into the rafters, and the man's corpse went flying down into the audience. Maybe killing some audience members? Well, probably not, but I mean, come on, let's get serious. And these men did not stop. Who were these these men in dark suits? They were ninjas. The Japanese fighting force? Was this racially motivated? Anyway, anyway, anybody that knows anything about bodybuilding knows that you just can't do this type of behavior. And this federation was doomed before Eddie Robinson even put his M16 down on the ground. Got even worse, Tony Pearson, legendary bodybuilder Tony Pearson, they had him flying a jet airplane. That's right, Tony Pearson. He got into this F-14 fighter, jet pilot, whatever. That's what he was. He was a jet pilot. Then it seemed kind of boring, didn't it? To see him walk out and do, do his posing routine. I mean, after all, we just seen him fly a fighter jet. Big mistake, big mistake. And if that wasn't enough, Mike Quinn, he was the final nail in this. He walked out with prostitutes. Hookers! Hookers! They were groping and touching, and that's the last thing you want to see in a bodybuilding show. Well, second to last, the last thing you want to see is out-of-shape people, and this guy was, with all due respect, well, this guy had belly fat. He had, you know, his boobs were hanging down. Just a... Terrible, terrible display. And that's why the WBF failed. There was too many ingredients that didn't belong. I mean, hey, I like chocolate. I like tuna, but not together. And that's what was wrong with the WBF. They were mixing tuna and chocolate. So we discussed why it sucked, why it was the worst. How could the WBF have worked? Do I think it could have actually worked? Absolutely. I think, first of all, if they had been able to secure Dorian Yates and made him the champion, I think absolutely the WBF would have reigned supreme. Would have even been better than the IFBB eventually. So was that actually a possibility? Well, let's listen in and see what Dorian has to say. Dorian here. Um... 
I was just recalling the time um, I just turned pro. I got second in my first pro show, Night of Champions, and earned the huge sum of $7,000. So I was still pretty broke. And uh, Tom Platts, who was my hero, contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in joining the WBF Bodybuilding Federation that was run by Vince McMahon and the WWE. And uh, I think they offered me something like 150 grand a year, so it was huge money for me at that time, life changing. But I actually said no because I felt that I had the potential to be Mr. Olympia and that's what I wanted to do. And um, that's how it turned out. And Tom Platt sent me a telegram after I won the first Mr. Olympia and said, You did it. So there you have it. It was a very real possibility. So if Dorian Yates had been in the WBF, I guess Lee Haney would have stuck it out and struggled along with the IFBB for a few more years. Because after all, they never would have met on the uh, Olympia stage. So I think at that point, it would have been the writing on the wall, the WBF would have been a force. And at that time, if you'll remember, Lou Ferrigno returned to the, uh, to the IFBB, as it were. But could you imagine if they had brought this beef onto the, the WBF stage? Well, much like Dorian Yates, that was actually a possibility. Look at this. Look at this. They had uh, definitely some works going on. And with star power like that, all of the young guys, Sean Ray, Kevin Lavroni, Lee Priest, and Flex Wheeler, all of those guys would have came over. But could you imagine a showdown between... Lou Frigno and Dorian Yates. I mean, that would have been the biggest thing in bodybuilding. And even if Dorian didn't come over, I think that uh, Gary Stridham and Lou Frigno would have been in a main event anywhere in the world. My goodness, my goodness. Of course, it was ran by pro wrestling promoters, so they could have, you know, pulled some strings for Lou. Looks good from the front. Anyway, guys, that's why the WBF was a total flop and... One of the worst, or absolutely the worst federation with some of the best tools and some of the, you know, most uh, access to money, things of that nature. So really should have been a success. But at the end of the day, they did not even make it into 1993. Anyway, guys, hit thumbs up on this video. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed throwing it together. Have a great one.